Hi everyone, this is Ross, and today I received a solar powered pond pump which will hopefully provide some gentle filtration for the pond overnight. Uh, the problem I have with my pump at the minute is it actually plugs into the wall, and that requires us to leave the window open overnight, and that's just not ideal because things can get in, like bugs and uh, even birds. Um, so, yeah, uh, the plan is in the new pond I'm going to be digging in about a week's time. Um, I'm going to start off on, a, on a, a good note, I'm going to have lots of filtration for it and um, this is just going to be a lot better for the pond in general than having no flow at night. It's going to provide oxygen for the fish and it's going to keep the water a bit clearer. Uh, so I got this from eBay, it was £80 and um, I'll put a link to the eBay page in the uh, description below for anyone who's interested. Um, but I've had quite a lot of solar powered pumps from eBay before. Um, I usually just get small uh, 100 litre per hour ones. Uh, I mentioned this is 800 litres per hour. And um, the smaller ones from Hong Kong and uh, different places like that usually aren't very good quality. Um, for example, on the back of a, a solar panel, um, they usually have all the electronics exposed, they have the soldering exposed and uh, it's just not great. As you can see this one has a nice box over it so hopefully it doesn't uh, get damaged by the weather or anything like that. But just as a precaution I'm going to take this in in winter. Um, but yeah it seems pretty good quality. Everything looks like it's been built pretty well. Uh, everything's pretty heavy which suggests it's been um, put together well and um, yeah so first of all I'm going to go over everything I got in the kit and explain what they all do. So this thing over here is just a ring of super bright LEDs. Uh, one of the options is to actually make this pump into a fountain and to do that um, you've got to assemble a fountain head and clip it onto the nozzle there and at night this actually comes on uh, it's kind of like a white or a blue and it lights up the fountain at night so that's one of the options for this pump I probably won't be using this, but it's still nice to have in case um, I want to do that in the future. Um, so yeah, it lights up at night and it can be made into a fountain. Uh, this obviously, as I mentioned, is the solar panel. Uh, I think it's really well made, it's got a glass cover. Uh, some of the other uh, pumps I've had have just got little um, tiny solar panels and they're covered in plastic and they're just not well made. Uh, this one's pretty nice, heavy, it's got a, a metal frame and uh, yeah I really like this um, so that looks quite good over here um, there you are the components for the stake to stick this into the ground uh, you've just got to assemble them then this piece clips onto the rim of this and um, it basically props it up so it uh, gets the most of the sunlight throughout the day uh, so that's a nice feature. Uh, this certainly won't go anywhere with those. Uh, this little thing is basically a remote control. Uh, so that allows us to turn on the pump um, from inside the house. So that's uh, very useful to have. It's absolutely tiny. Uh, this over here looks a bit like a house. It actually contains the, re the rechargeable battery. Um, uh, it's got a few LED indicators on there just telling you the charge of the battery and when it needs to be recharged. Uh, it's got an on and off switch and it's also got this nice little feature. It's a little dial. It uh, I think it changes the voltage or the current. I'm not too sure. I think voltage. Um, but if this pump is spitting out too much water, you can actually turn down the voltage. Uh, that's quite a good feature to have because on many pumps that you just plug into the wall, uh, the only way to change the current is to change it on the actual pump, which this actually has. Um, but it doesn't actually change the power consumption. It still takes up the same amount of power. With this, you can actually change the amount of power this gets. Uh, so obviously, if you have it on a lower power setting, uh, you'll get much longer out of the battery, uh, which is really good. So if I think this is uh, spitting out too much water, I can just turn down the voltage and uh, this will also last a lot longer. Um, onto the pump, I really like how the pump's designed, it's got a nice flow regulator there. 
Um, pretty small nozzle, but uh, the pump itself is quite big. Um, it was bigger than what I thought, and uh, underneath here, the intake is under it, uh, which is quite nice. Because when it sits on the bottom of a pond, usually all the all the dirt gathers at the bottom, and then it can be sucked up straight up here. So that's uh, a really nice feature. Because uh, sometimes uh, the intake is at the top here, and it it doesn't usually gather the um, the dirt that gathers at the bottom. So that's quite nice. Um, I'm going to also place this in the lowest part of the pond um, so that it gathers as much dirt as possible. Uh, it's got four feet with suckers and that's going to enable us to stick it to the pond liner a lot better. So overall I think this has been really well built and uh, it looks pretty good quality. Uh, so there's a few different options I could um, do with this. I could make it into a fountain using these fountain heads. Uh, I could just sit it at the bottom of the pond, moving water about. Uh, I could make it into a waterfall, or I could make it into a filter. Uh, I think I'll make this into a filter, and uh, in order to do that, I need some uh, holes for this nozzle. Uh, just to save us looking around for holes, uh, in different shops, I actually just had a look upstairs, and I found this piece of tubing off uh, a water siphon. And it just so happens it's just the right size to fit on the nozzle. Uh, it's it's quite a squeeze to get on, but once it's on, it's completely watertight. Uh, so that's great. Uh, that'll enable us to pump the water up, and uh, it'll drain into a, a box full of filter media, and then it'll eventually drain back into the pond. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's uh, looking really good. Uh, so now, I'll just assemble the whole thing, and I'll show you once I've done. Okay, so that's it. Um, it was really simple to put together and it took less than a minute. Uh, I didn't even need to look at the instructions, um, but everything is labelled. Uh, all the little ports are labelled. That was labelled um, pump, so obviously I had to connect the pump to it. And it's got two more little um, ports there uh, for the LEDs. If I wanted to buy another set of LEDs, I can. Uh, and there's one here for the solar panel. Uh, they've, they've weatherproofed the uh, little jacks there really well. And uh, hopefully no rain gets in there. But uh, just to ensure I'll put some uh, electrician tape over that. And uh, yeah, it looks really well. Uh, I'll just turn this on. Just press it on there. And you can see the yellow light flashing there. Which means uh, the solar panel is actually charging the battery inside there and um, to turn the pump on. Uh, you're not really supposed to run it in the air but I'll quickly do it just to show you it works. There we go. So it's uh, it's definitely working and um, yeah so I need to leave this for about eight hours to uh, initially fully charge the battery. Uh, so I'll come back tomorrow and I'll show you once it's working in the pond. So join us tomorrow for that. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I'd really appreciate a comment and a like. Bye.